What's going on guys? This is Brain from Advancement Hockey Advising here and today we'll be talking about how you can play pro after college hockey. The amount of questions we get about this topic here is absolutely absurd. It's probably the most common question that we get here is that, hey, I play at this college hockey level. You know, how, uh, what are my chances to play pro? Can you help us get pro? Blah, 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 blah. It's, it's actually crazy the amount of questions we get on this. So we just said enough's enough. We're gonna go ahead and release a complete guide here outlining you know, all the different uh, leagues that you can compete for based on where you play at a college hockey and so on. And just a guide that you can use here to have the utmost success moving forward if you're trying to make that jump from college to pro hockey. So this video is gonna have two parts here. First, we're gonna outline you know, all the different realistic leagues depending on where you played at the college hockey level. So that's gonna be the first part here. Second part, we're just gonna give you basically the tips and tricks you can use to maximize your chances of playing pro, you know, all the actionable steps basically that you can take. And one quick notice I do wanna give here, as with all of our videos, our advice here is gonna be extremely general, right? Especially when we say, you know, where you fare up, uh, depending on where you've played and all that kind of stuff, you know, is extremely general and your situation is unique, right? And uh, don't let, you know, our video, you know, discourage you or anything like that. It's just to give you a rough estimate as to where you stand when you're going to be trying to play, uh, make that jump to pro. Real quick, before we dive into our list of things here, as always with all of our videos here, absolutely smash that like button if you haven't already. And if you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you never miss another video again moving forward. All right, so let's dive into the first part of our video here, which is what leagues you should target based on where you've played. All right, so first we're gonna start with NCAA D1 here. If you had a solid career at the NCAA D1 level, meaning you had you know some good stats, you played for a really good program, and uh, overall you just had a good career, these are the leagues you're gonna be looking at here. So first I would say AHL would probably be quite realistic. You're probably gonna get quite a few looks here and uh, you probably might end up at the AHL level to start. You know, that's a very realistic way to look at it. You might get a few NA, uh, NHL looks depending on how well you did, right? If you're a superstar and you did really well, obviously you're gonna get a lot of NHL looks, but you know, overall you'll probably get a few NHL looks as well, but I would say AHL would probably be realistic and a really long-term career in European hockey is where you see most guys that had a good career at the NCAA D1 level go. You'll be in top leagues like, you know, the Swedish Elite League, You'll be looking at the, the DAL in Germany, right? You'll be looking at all those top European leagues. So, you know, your options are very, very good if you had a good career at the NCAA D1 level. As to where you end up on the spectrum of leagues, it really depends on how good your career was, right? And what program you played with. Pessimistically though, I would say the lowest you'd be looking at though, if you had a good career at the NCAA D1 level, is probably in the um, East, East Coast Hockey League, right? The ECHL. I would say very pessimistically, you know, if all else fails, you know, you'll probably at least land a spot in the ECHL uh, in this point. All right, so if you had an okay or so-so career at the NCAA D1 level, or if you didn't play for the best program or anything like that, you know, you're still gonna have some good options. I would say at this point, the East Coast Hockey League is quite realistic, you know? Uh, you might get a few AHL looks, but more likely, you know, you're gonna end up somewhere in the East Coast Hockey League. If you're very, you know, unlucky, if you were, we're looking at it with a lot of pessimism, maybe the, the Southern Pro Hockey League, you know, the SPHL. But I would say, you know, even if you have a so-so career at the NCAA D1 level, you got a lot of games in, all that kind of stuff. I feel like some East Coast Hockey League teams will give you a shot here and you will have a good shot at making it. Um, you can also look at probably some secondary, you know, European pro leagues. You can think maybe, um, you know, the league and the top league in, in Denmark or France or anything like that is probably what you'd be looking at if you had a so so D1 hockey career. Moving on to U Sports here. Well, for U Sports, you know, if you had a very good hockey career in U Sports, I would say, you know, you'd be, you'd be looking at somewhere between if you had uh, an okay hockey career at the NCAA D1 level, and even if you had a, a very good career at the NCAA D1 level, it'd be somewhere in between there if you had a very solid career at the U Sports level. So I would say East Coast Hockey League, definitely, um, you, you know, you will get some looks there. You'll it'd probably be very realistic for you. Secondary European leagues, you know, stuff like that. Um, and probably some AHL looks. If you absolutely crush it at the, the U Sports level, potentially even some NHL looks, but I would say more realistic, some AHL looks, 
and realistically sign the East Coast Hockey League or something like that. If you have an okay youth sports career, you know, I would say you'd be looking at maybe, you know, realistically maybe the Southern Pro Hockey League, you know, something like that. Depending on, of course, okay is an umbrella term here. It could be any, like a spectrum of things, right? But I would say SPHL, some lower end uh, European leagues. Uh, too, you know, maybe not very low end, but in, in the mid pack uh, European leagues. Um, and you might get uh, still an ECHL PTO, right? Like a professional tryout to go and, and try out for them and stuff like that. But if you only had an okay career at the U Sports level, I can't see an East Coast Hockey League team signing you right off the gate. You're gonna have to prove yourself and go to tryouts. But overall, that's what you'd be looking at for U Sports. Moving on, another tier down here to high-end NCAA D3. When I say high-end, I really mean the top programs, like maybe top 15 programs in the country, right? So programs like Oswego State, Plattsburgh, uh, Norwich State, Norberts, all those kind of programs, those are what I mean when I say high-end NCAA D3. Um, if you had a very, very solid NCAA D3 career, I would say um, at the high-end level, I would say, you know, somewhere between, again, um, a solid career U sports and an okay career U sports, I would say you'd, you'd be getting the same kind of looks. You know, you'll probably get a good SPHL signing somewhere, right? You might get an East Coast Hockey League PTO and you'll probably be looking at some mid mid-end leagues in Europe, right? Like the, the France D1, which is the, the second league in France. You know, you'd probably be looking at leagues like that. Overall though, if you have a solid NCAA D3 career, again, your your future is quite bright to go play pro hockey. It is, you, you still have a good shot at going playing pro. Now, if you have just an okay career in one of these high-end programs, you still have some options. I would say you'll probably get, maybe you'll get a, a SPHL PTO, right? A professional tryout. At this point, the Federal Hockey League is probably a bit more realistic. You'll, if, you, if you play in a high-end program, you did okay. I think uh, you'll probably get signed somewhere in the Fed. And you know, some, some lower to mid-end European leagues too might look at you, but it might be a little bit harder because they really look at stats heavily in the European leagues. So I would say it'd probably be a lower end European league if you're looking at that. Now the next tier here has a bunch of it in it. So we're gonna look at lower to mid-end NCAA D3 programs, NCAA D2 programs, and BCIHL, right? All of these collegiate um, you know, divisions, we're all grouping them together because they're all very similar here. So if you had a solid career in any of these programs, right, I would say, you know, looking at the Federal Hockey League uh, to get signed right away would be probably realistic. For the SPHL, you know, it's getting a PTO maybe, but again, you're in a lower end program or NCAA D2 or anything like that. It, it is a little bit trickier, right? You'll have to get a really good agent or you'll have to get a coach that really likes your video or something like that to give you a PTO. It is possible, but it is a little bit harder, I have to say. So Fed is realistic and again lower end um, European league you know like the the Sweden D2 Sweden D3 France you know D3 or something like that Th those are the ones that you'll probably be looking at here just because you're in a lower end program if you had an okay career at this point I would say you know getting a federal hockey PTO that's probably what you're gonna be looking at right because even though you might have NCAA D3 or D2 on your resume, if you didn't have a great career there, um, you know, Federal Hockey League teams probably won't jump on you right away. They'll probably want you to prove yourself. So that's what you'd be looking at. <laughs> Trying to go to Europe here, if you don't have great stats or if you didn't have a great career, uh, it'd be a lot tougher, right? You'd probably be looking at starting to go into the pay to play realm to try and prove yourself and stuff. So I would say in this case, if you have an okay career at this level, you know, try and get um, a federal hockey league PTO and try and make the team from there. So the next tier below this is if you're at a very high end ACHA D1 program, meaning like top 10 ACHA D1 programs, and you have a great career. Okay, you need these two things to be eligible for what we're about to talk about here. At this point, you'll probably get a Federal Hockey League PTO, right? They're probably gonna give you a tryout opportunity. You know, ACHA doesn't help you on your resume, but you'll probably get the opportunity because you had a great career at the ACHA D1 level. Uh, you might get signed, Right off the gate, I've I've not seen this happen yet, but I think it is possible. You know, if you have amazing stats, great video, you know, the coach really likes you, it's the right fit, you might get signed right away, but more realistically, it's gonna be a PTO. Um, for Europe though, you will probably be able to go at those lower end pro leagues again because your stats are so strong and if your video is very good, they, some European teams in the lower end pro leagues will probably give you some, some contract offers. So that's one thing to look at there. All right, and moving on to our last tier here is if you played for any ACHA 
ACHA program that falls below, you know, those top ACHA D1 programs, or if you just had an average career or okay career at a top ACHA D1 program, I would say this is where we fall. At this point, you know, I'll be honest, it gets very difficult, right? You really have to work your way up and you really have to ask yourself if it's worth it. What you'll get is probably semi-professional um, contracts, like senior A teams, all that kind of stuff. You know, senior A where I'm currently playing right now, right? But um, it's, it's basically, you're gonna get those kind of offers. If you wanna go to Europe, you're gonna have to go into the pay to play realm, right? You're gonna have to go on teams where they don't really pay you much or don't pay you anything at all, where you have to pay a lot of your expenses. And you're just gonna have to go there to try and work your way up and build your resume. Me. You know, you could go to, to Fed tryouts. They probably won't offer you a PTO at this point. You're going to have to go to free agent camp, prove yourself, work your way up. It's totally doable. I actually know a few players that have done that, that have worked their way up. And now actually one's playing in the Southern Professional Hockey League, the SPHL. But, you know, he's, you know, one of the few success stories. It's, it's a grind. And I have to be honest here that it's... You know, you really have to grind your way up and work your way up and actually be a good hockey player to be able to do that. So it is tough. It's not impossible. Don't want to discourage you guys, but I just want to be honest here. That is it for our kind of overall list as to where you stand, as to where you can go. Now we're going to move on to the second part of our video here, which is the steps that you can actually take to maximize your chances of playing pro hockey and sticking there. Number one, decide that you actually want to play pro hockey and understand why you're doing this, right? It's very, very important to do this step some players just blindly go into pro hockey not really knowing what they're getting into it's important that you understand what you're getting into and that you know that you actually want to do this right because if you just go into pro hockey blindly and you don't really have any direction in life or anything like that you have to understand that every year you play pro hockey you're you're sacrificing your time and your life to not do something else like, you know, kickstart your career, go back to school, all that kind of stuff, right? Not saying that one is better than the other. I think pro hockey can be a great experience, but you have to understand that you're actually spending your time going to play hockey versus doing other things, right? So you have to know that, yes, this is what I want to do. And you have to know what you're getting into. You know, it's important to know that pro hockey isn't always as glamorous as it seems, especially if you're, you know, starting from the lower end leagues and working your way up, right? It, it, a lot of times, you know, you get a very low salary, you don't get very great accommodations um, and, and it's just a grind honestly so you have to be prepared for that obviously if you go to the top end pro leagues it's not so much a grind anymore but if you're coming from the bottom like I said it is a little bit tougher you're in smaller cities you know there, there's, there's just a lot of things that go into it so I'm not trying to discourage you guys by any means I just want to be you know open transparent up front with you guys so you know exactly what you're getting into right if you do decide to go that way but assuming you know you say yes you know I want to go through the grind I want to work my way up I want to have this experience then absolutely go for it you know if you get this step done great we'll move on to step two here so step number two here is to create a realistic list of target teams and leagues and again the word realistic is very important here okay like we that's why we made that list a while ago right as to where you can stack up and all that kind of stuff it's very important because you, you don't want to waste your time you know um, you know messaging teams that that are in the you know the Swedish elite league if you played you know it's WD3 hockey it's just not going to happen, right? That's not realistic. So it's very important to create a realistic set, um, set of leagues and teams, right? So what I typically do, you know, is you go on Elite Prospects and you go, uh, you can use our video as a guide first too, if you want, but from there, you can do more research, go on Elite Prospects, see, you know, where, click on a team in a particular league, right? Uh, see their roster and click on those players as names, right? That often gives you, you know, hints as to where they've played, what kind of resume they had and all that kind of stuff, right? Know your stats very well. Know how good your highlight video is, right? Because your stats and your highlight video where you played, that's what teams are going to be looking at, right? That's what coaches are, are going to be looking for. They don't know you, right? So they're going to base their opinion off of that. So know how good your stats are. Know how they fare up against other players that are currently playing there, right? So that's very, very, very important. Um, and also understand this too, that you are the import, right? If you're coming from North America and you want to go to Europe, you know, just a side point here, you're the import. So you're expected to be one of the best players. Okay. So you got to look at these players uh, names on elite prospects, right? Click on them, see where they play. Look at the import specifically, see, you know, where they play see how you match up. That's a great way to know, okay, okay, the, this, this is realistic, this is not realistic. From there, you know, you kind of start making a list of 
leagues and teams that make sense and you're gonna be good to go we're gonna move on to step three all right so now that you know what leagues you want to go to step number three is getting a good agent okay this step isn't required but we highly recommend it right because uh, without an agent it makes your life a lot more difficult you know with an agent you know when you do your research on your own like this of all the target leagues and teams like that the agent will confirm to you okay this is realistic this is not realistic and all that kind of stuff so it, it really does make sense for that but the agent also has the connections right if you um, try and contact these teams yourself you'll be solely disappointed with the response rate that you get right agents have been around the block all you know, the good agents at least and they you know they have those connections and you know when they message teams teams actually answer them so that's that's one thing there but on that note though you know it's, it's really important to get a good agent right and do your due diligence and your research when you're looking at different agents you really want to make sure that they're good that other people you know have said good things about them and all that kind of stuff we actually made a video on good versus bad family advisors you can click on the link here if you want to go see it it, it's on family advisors, but honestly, it, it applies to agents too. It's almost the same thing, right? So if you want to see, you know, what separates a good agent from a bad agent, you can check out that video. But overall, you know, just do your research. Make sure you have a good agent that can actually help you out. It'll really, really pay dividends moving forward. Also, just a shameless plug here. You know, we offer agent services for guys who want to go minor pro. You don't have to go with us by any means. You can find any other agent that, that can help you out. But, you know, if you want to go with us and you're comfortable with us, you can do that too. Just thought I'd throw that out there so you guys know. All right, so step number four here. This is if you don't have an agent. So I guess it's like step 3B, but we'll just call it step number four. If you don't have a good agent, market yourself, right? It's really important to know how to do this. Uh, the first thing I always tell players, you know, sign up, even if you have an agent, sign up for a Got My Team profile, okay? You go on that website. And uh, basically, you know, all it asks is you put all your relevant info, you know, in there. And it's basically a platform where, you know, coaches are looking for a specific type of player. Um, you know, they post an application and for players that go on there, they can fill out an application and apply to different teams. It's kind of a nice platform. Quite a few coaches in the European world anyways, use it. So if your goal is to go to Europe, this is a great platform to use. I would say, yeah, put all your, your relevant info in there and apply to, you know, as many relevant teams on your target list as possible that are on there so that's the first thing i would do second you know not obviously not every team is on that platform um i would go ahead you know just try and find the the coaches on facebook or try and find their emails and stuff like that and reach out to them right keep it professional as always please 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 keep it professional when you do it and overall you put put all your relevant info right like your name you know your birth year your position the team you played for your elite prospects link very important your highlight video link very important you know make sure you include those in there but we made videos in the past talking about that so i'm not going to go in depth but just make sure that you include all the relevant info when you're reaching out to them between the got my team and between reaching out to all the coaches hopefully by then you can get multiple offers and you can move on to the next step step number five here is once you do have offers that are received try and negotiate with them as much as possible and then from there choose the best offer you can choose to sign with the team right don't skip that negotiation step if you have multiple offers if you have one obviously sign with the team right if you want to go there but if you have multiple offers negotiate negotiate your salary you know negotiate all a couple different perks you get so maybe free housing try and see who can give you the best offer and what's going to be the best experience for you and from there narrow down your choice and choose from there we made a, a whole video on how to choose which hockey program to sign with uh, you can click on it up here on the link if you want to check it out but honestly yeah it's don't don't skip the negotiation step some players as soon as they get an offer they sign right away I typically say hold on just wait a little bit you know see if other teams you know offer you something and from there you can kind of negotiate and get the best deal that you can get so it's a win-win for everyone all right and now moving on to our last step here step number six is just a few little quick tips and tricks that we put together here once you're actually signed and once you're on the team first thing on our list here is just to find something else to do outside of hockey in pro hockey much like in junior hockey you know um, you have a lot of free time and it's easy to fall into the junior hockey trap of uh, becoming a senior citizen, right? So find something else to do, whether that's work, you know, helping, you know, in clinics, a lot of teams need that, you know, help with youth hockey and all that, um, you know, going back to school online or something like that, finding something to do because it's really important because if you have too much downtime, it's never a good thing. You want to have that structure in your day. So that's the first quick thing that we want to mention to you. Second thing is to really familiarize yourself with the country and the culture. Uh, 
uh, that you're going to. It's really different over there in Europe, right? Um, especially some countries, it's a very different culture. So uh, watch some YouTube videos on it, you know, uh, do some research on it on the web and all that stuff, just to make sure that you know what you're getting into when you're going there, because trust me, it, there is quite a bit of a culture chalk. A couple um, people on our, a couple advisors on our team, they've been to Europe, they, they, they witnessed the culture shock pretty hard. Uh, for a few places that they went. So make sure you do your research before you get there. You'll thank me later if you do. And last quick thing, this should go with, uh, I shouldn't even have to say this, but I will because sometimes it gets overlooked. Always conduct yourself in a professional manner on and off the ice, right? You're a pro at this point, um, you're looked up to in the community, so make sure you just behave in a professional manner where people actually you know, respect you and, and that you lead by example and all that kind of stuff. All right, so I know this video was a huge one. It was a long one. It was very informative, but I think it's gonna be a valuable video for you. It's gonna be a complete guide. Definitely, you know, go back through this video, you know, to, to really understand the ins and outs here if you need to, especially the first part, you know, it, can, it, it was very specific and give you some really good info. You know, I think it's really gonna help. We're not gonna recap every single thing here because it's gonna take too long, but essentially, again, the video is two parts. First is basically, you know, uh, looking at where you played in college hockey, where you stand, and what are your chances to co play in various pro leagues. And then from there, we talked about, you know, the, very, the, the various steps that you can take to maximize your chances of signing a pro, with a pro hockey team and actually staying there and having a good experience. So overall, that's what we talked about. But again, you know, use this video as a really complete guide to give you an idea as to where you stand and what you can do. All right, guys, that is it for the video. If you had any questions or anything come up throughout the entire video uh, that you want to talk to us about, feel free to drop a comment down below or email us at info at ahadvising.com and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. And again, if you got any kind of value at all in this video, you know, and if you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you never miss another video moving forward. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video and we'll catch you on that next one.